Alrighty, you all, you can come on back. Make sure cameras are on. All right. So, as I said earlier, I'm happy that you got your supplies and you did. And what we're gonna do is, we're actually gonna make this scale right here, pH scale. So you see how it has these type of uh, strips here from one all the way to 14. So what you're gonna do is, if you grab some, some construction paper like this, you can grab more than one sheet if you want to, to layer it up. What you're gonna do is you're gonna take the paper and you're gonna do a hot dog fold right down the middle. Nice hot dog fold like this. And what you're gonna do, you're gonna grab the scissors. And if you don't feel comfortable with scissors, please grab an adult, it's okay. And you're gonna make a nice strip on the side like that. And if you have more than one sheet underneath, please be aware that it's gonna make more than one strip. You see, since I have two, I'll come up with two strips like this. Just make sure that all your strips together is 14. And you see that little line in the middle? We're gonna cut that in half like so. And you're gonna keep doing this until you have 14 strips, little strips like these, all together, like this. All 14 strips. Now what we're gonna do, we're gonna put our materials to the side and grab our markers or crayons or, or coloring pencils. And you can pick one of each color or whatever colors you might want. And then we're gonna grab these strips, each strip, and we're gonna color them a different color. Just like the scale that I have right here. All right. All right, so Miss Tail over here is gonna do red. I'm gonna do red orange. And Miss Eve is going to do blue and we're gonna color these strips. Just like so. Well, nothing has to be perfect. As long as you enjoy doing this activity, it's okay. A oh, nice color. And if you feel like you're gonna mess up any table or any hard surfaces you are on a saw, make sure you put a paper on it. So the markings that are coming off of the pencil can go onto the paper just like that. And once you're done with the strips, you can put it to the side and start a new one, just like so. Orange this time. And feel free to, if you want to mix colors, go ahead. Mix colors like that. Vanilla.
There's no rush. Just make sure you got your steps nice and covered. Green. Like I said before, it's okay if you want to make some colors that you don't have. and some purple as a mixture. Like I said, if you want something better, you can always use that. Uh, nice bluish purple over here. And if you want, you can range them out. Then we have our blue, and then we have our other blues. And purple. And lastly, but not least, our purple. So it should look kind of like this. Or however, uh, however colors you have. So then next, you're gonna bring out your background piece of construction paper, nice and blank like this. And if so, if you haven't done it already, you can put two holes at the top Make sure you be very careful. Two holes at the top of the corners like this for your string for later. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna move our strips to the side. Side. So we can add room. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna place our paper nice and flat. And this time we're gonna grab our glue. We're gonna take each strip and we're gonna glue them onto the background. Now, if you already colored the background paper, or if it's already colored, that is perfectly fine.
go. And it's okay if you get some glue on your fingers, it's perfectly fine. That's the process. As long as you're having fun making this craft, that's what really matters. And it's okay if you gotta move some to the side. It is perfectly fine. There we go. To make some room on the paper if it's not too big. There we go. This strip. Now push them to the end to make sure it's nice. There we go. There we go. And our last strip. There we go. So now our next step is we're going to label the strips. And this one you can use like a marker if you have it. Or if you have a crayon or at least a pencil or a pen, it is totally fine. And what you can do is you're going to label it from this side from 1 all the way to 14. So underneath the shirts. Just like so, underneath here. And then what you're gonna do is under seven, you can put a little line, a dash down here, and write the word neutral. So that's N E U T R A L. And then what you're gonna do is from seven all the way to 14, you could draw a little arrow like that. And then underneath of it, you can write basic, which is B-A-S-I-C. And then from all the way to seven, all the way down to one, you draw another line. You're gonna write excited, which is A-C-I-D. And once you have that, you can draw little lines up top, show what falls under those different categories. Put a line up top. And this is where you can grab your regular pencil right here. And that's where the drawing parts come. So this is the time to unmute. Looks like an get. I remember that, hmm, I think PH, she said some examples of what fall on the scale. So Brian, do you remember what fell on the scale? Like the examples that PH said that could be on the scale, do you remember? No, yeah, I remember. <laughs> it's okay. Uh, she did say certain type of foods, you know, household products. So, like an A, 
You can definitely put an egg. And let's put that at number eight. You can draw like a little egg. Nice little egg, like an oval. Kind of color it as so. So that would be leaning towards the basic side. So that will be an egg. I think, Brian, do you remember what should be at seven? Or do you want to take a guess? That's what a W. You drink it every day. It's hard to remember. <laughs> huh? It's not hard to remember. Like, okay. <laughs> Um, that's for the W. It's clear. You wash with it. You clean the dishes with it. Water. Yep. Water. Bingo. Water should be at seven. Because it's neutral. So you can draw a little glass. Top. Draw a little water in it. And then this way, I think, let's jump all the way at number one. Now, number one, we didn't really go over it, but it's um, actually number one, which is the most exciting thing that's possible that is in the world is, well, one of the things in the world is actually stomach acid. It's at number one. So the ASIC in their stomach is number one, if you put that on a page. Kind of makes sense that stomach acid is number one because, you know, it helps digest our food. And it's very, very dangerous if our stomachs were outside and had to eat. It's really, it's really dangerous. But it helps digest our food. All right, and number two, as of course we use this for dishes, we use this when we need something to drink, when it's hot outside, we use it when we're cleaning something, it's lemon juice for number two. You can draw a lemon. Or like a little lemon head. Our little dots for the moment. And then for number three, it's like a little sand. Goes, it's actually an apple. Like how in the sand, an apple a day keeps the doctor away. Well, it's actually kind of on the acidic side. Because you know, you use it for vinegar as well. And it's kind of a little bit, has a lot of that ash because it actually is mixed with, you know, it's natural and it's coming from trees. And plus, since the trees come from soil, I guess that's why it will be on that acidic side. So all that fertilizer and plus it's fresh. And then next for number four, we have two tomato juice. Nice little tomato, a little stem. I know a lot of people use tomatoes for soup, sauce, spaghetti as well. And definitely to get rid of stuff. Stuff over. That's definitely number one. And coming up at number five, I know a lot of adults drink this and a lot of some kids drink this. That's actually black coffee. You know, to help people wake up in the day. Close to a neutral. So that would be at number five. We can draw a cup, like so. A 
a cup, like a mug. Have a little steam coming up if you want. You can really get creative with this. Add a little saucer. Are purple. And then coming up at number six, which is the closest near water, and it comes from cows. You may know it. Think you know it? Comes from cows. Use it in your uh, cereal. Do you know, Brian? Um, Comes from cow, and you see it a lot in your cereal. Starts with an M. Cereal. Milk. Milk. <laughs> of course you need milk in your cereal, right? <laughs> well, I know some people use milk in their cereal. Some people just eat as it is. But you definitely need some milk because it's good for your bones and it's good in a um, source of calcium that helps your bones become nice and strong. So that one was not as aesthetic, but it's kind of more of the basics, uh, the nutrients. So we have our milk. And then next, we're gonna jump over to number nine. And number nine, a lot of people use it as this type of famous science experiment. You mix it in with vinegar and it comes out as a huge reaction. And that is baking soda. And it's also a good thing. So some people tend to use baking soda as well in, uh, to test water to see if it will change. Sometimes it helps balance the pH a little bit or help bring it up or lower. And then next, we all use it to wash your hands. You think you know what it is, Brian? Use it to wash your hands. And that is hand soap. Definitely you wash your hands with soap. So that should be at number 10. So the bottle. So So the bottom hand soap here. And then coming up at number 11, we have actually ammonia. Is it, it's also used for chemicals for cleaning as well. A lot of people use it, but sometimes you're not supposed to really eat certain, a uh, certain type of ammonia because it can be bad and toxic, even though it's an odorless and colorless gas. Put a bottle here. Put that at number 11. We're going to make this red. And coming up at number 12, we have our bleach. Now, I know you have heard of bleach, you know, using at home to clean or sanitize a lot of stuff. And it's a bit of a strong smell, but it's actually really basic, even though it's a chemical. 
And then coming up at number 13 and 14, which is both, it's just concentrated solution of alcohol. So you can put like a little vase or a little test tube or a beaker, however you want it. You can draw little bubbles coming out of it want to I like a little yeah so this will be 13 and 14. And then once you have every last one of these drawn and labeled you can grab your marker and up top you can put the pH scale P H E Lowercase p, capital H, L, S, C, A, L, E. And then you're going to grab your string. Any color string you want, whether it's a pipe cleaner or not, just like the two little holes you used earlier. You're going to grab the string. If you need help with this, you can carefully use your pencil to poke the Bring in, just make sure you don't poke yourself, just like so. And a tie one in. Make sure it's nice and tight. And then we're gonna grab the other end, do the same thing. and do the exact same thing. And now you have your pH scale. Of course, if you didn't finish, it's okay. You can always do this later if you feel like it. And now that you have your string, you can hang it up anywhere on the wall. So next time you might be thinking, where does this item fall on the pH scale? You can look at your own scale and say, oh, it's actually neutral or it's kind of basic, more on the basic side or more the acidic side. So I'm glad you did this activity with me.